Hello and welcome back to Harkis CGTV. In this episode, we are going to discuss being a professional footballer. We have compiled 10 different things that you should not do if you want to be a professional footballer. Not necessarily, these, these 10 rules are not set in stone. There's more things that you can do, there's more things that you shouldn't do, but we've put together this to try and help you out. Okay, number one, sending emails to people. If you send an email to someone, whether that's on Facebook or Instagram or just a direct email, do not just send an email that says hi or hello. Believe me, I get this email all the time. I get emails from people that say, Hi, that's it, that's all I get. Do you expect the other person to then contact you back, to then find out? What happens is it goes straight into the trash and you'll be lucky to get an email back. So when you contact someone, don't just email them saying hi or hello and expect them to guess with a magic crystal ball the reason why you're messaging them. Number two, on Facebook or Instagram, have your name. Don't have a fake name. I don't want to contact someone who his name is Bob Tory or Zaha. Your name. You're the person that wants to be the professional footballer. So you are the person that has to put your name. So I know as an agent or intermediary or football consultant, or professional person in football, who I am speaking to. Say your name. Your Facebook should not be anyone else's name but yours. Number three, now this one's really important. Number three, do not lie on your profile. I see people's profiles on Facebook all the time that says I am a left back for Borussia Dortmund or I am the striker for Barcelona. You are not. Say that you are an aspiring footballer, you're an amateur footballer, you're a young player that wants to be a footballer, or if you are a professional footballer, have links to show the clubs that you've played for with pictures, etc. We'll get into that later. But the main point here is, do not pretend that you go to Oxford University, or you went to Cambridge University, or you live in London when you live in Sierra Leone. Say where you are from, say who you are, and be honest in your profile. Think of it this way. If you're a coach and you're contacting someone, or you're an agent, an intermediary, and you go onto their profile and it says that they live in London, when they don't live in London, when it says that they went to New York, or they live in New York, they went to university and college in New York, when they don't, and they live in South America, People will not be interested in working with you if you do not show that you are an honest and trustworthy person. So that's really important to remember. Number four. Now this, this kind of sounds a bit stupid, but it is important. When you contact someone, contact them appropriately and properly. Don't say, hey bro. Say, contact them, dear sir, or find out their name. That's very important try and use their name. Speak to them properly. Don't speak to them like, hey bro, this isn't a conversation you're having with your best friend. This is something that's professional for you and you should be dealing with this in a professional manner. If you want them to answer you back professionally, be professional. Number five. Now, this one I get so often. People send me messages with not just saying hi or hello and then pictures and pictures and pictures. Many times the pictures there aren't even standing in a football kit or on a football pitch. When you contact someone, make sure that they are asked to see pictures or preferably video footage because a picture doesn't really tell us anything. We want video footage of you playing football. Showing a picture doesn't help anyone particularly if you send 10, 20 pictures to someone. Believe me, I get this all the time. It happens when people don't want that. Number six. I'm the best footballer ever. I am an amazing footballer. I am great. Sounds, sounds like you get this all the time. I do. I get this all the time. Not everyone gets to write their own reviews. You don't get to write your review. You don't get to tell people how great you are. 
what you should do is maybe go to your coach and get a reference from your coach or from a school teacher or a PE teacher or someone that understands the game, someone who's qualified in the game. If you say, I'm the best player in my team, first of all, that tells me that you do not respect your, uh, the other players in your team. Second of all, it tells me that you haven't gone to your coach to get a recommendation from your coach. So don't come to intermediaries and agents saying, I'm the best player, when we don't know who you're comparing yourself to. So very quickly, don't send messages to people saying, I'm the best player. That doesn't work. Number seven. Okay, this one also happens a lot. You get an email from someone that says, Hi, my name is such and such. This is great. Everything goes fantastic. Then towards the end of the message, it says, The Lord God will shower you with gifts. Or, we believe that this will be wonderful and you will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. Now, this is a bit of a strange contentious issue the person you're contacting might not be a religious person the person you're contacting might not be Christian might not be Muslim might not be Buddhist might do might, Hindu whichever me personally I'm an atheist so I don't believe in any God so if someone's telling me that they're going to shower my family with gifts from God it doesn't mean anything to me it does actually come across as offensive. You're being offensive to someone and you're being over familiar with someone that you don't know. Number eight. When you send a message to an agent or intermediary or any football professional, they will 100% be busy people. Busy people, you want them to be busy. If they're busy, they're successful. But that also means that when you send them an email, they can't send you an email immediately, straight back. So what I would say is give it for a week and a half to two weeks, then contact them back. But with a very brief message saying, I sent you an email a week and a half ago. I'm just checking to find out that you got the email. I would appreciate uh, a response. Let me know what you think. What you think. That's it. Do not send emails with a question mark. I get that. If I have not messaged someone back in a day, I open my inbox and I get an email that just has a question mark. Think about it. If you got messages like that, how would you feel? It's no different to anyone else. Again, put yourself in the best possible light and be as polite as you can. These are huge issues and they make massive differences, even though it may seem such a small thing. Number nine. Now, I understand that the world is a big place and you might speak to a lot of people that don't understand the country that you're from. But you shouldn't always assume that the person you're speaking to doesn't understand the country that you're from. For example, if someone says, I want you to go on trial and I, I want to come and see you, then you shouldn't go to the person, well, I'm not able to do this because my country is poor, and then you start telling them the whole story of your country. The reality is you may have worked with someone in the Ivory Coast who has been to several trials before, or someone who's been to Senegal, or someone that's been to Ghana, or someone that's been to Brazil, where they know where their trials, and you are now just sounding like you're making excuses. If you have a genuine excuse, then people will genuinely listen. But if you start trying to lecture people on the ins and outs of your country, when you don't know what they know about your country and who they work with in your country, again, you come across bad. You don't come across that you are eager enough and you are not putting yourself in the best light. Number 10. Now, number 10, this is the last one here. Again, like as I said, there's probably a lot more. There is, I'm sure there's a lot more. And I'll think of a lot more later. But this one, number 10, this one is hugely important to me as well. Do not be rude and abusive to someone when they tell you something you might not want to hear. I'll give you an example again. If I get a message from someone who says, I'm 14 years old and I want to go on trial in Germany. So myself, as an intermediary, as an agent, I would say to them, well, at the age of 14, legally, you can't go there. Legally, you shouldn't be going there. What I, and if anyone is telling you you can, then that's illegal and they're lying to you. So what I would say in advice is, you should stay where you are at the moment. Make sure that you're playing football as much as you can. 
play for a local team. If you're not able to play for a local team, play for your school, speak to your school teachers, try to get as much help as you can, get as much experience and as much playing time as possible. These are 10 things you should not do if you're trying to be a professional footballer. Like I said, there's lots of other things out there, but these 10 things are a good solid 10. Rewind it back, go back to the beginning, go through these 10 things. Make sure these are not things that you are doing. Make sure also that you click and subscribe, switch on the notifications, let that little bell go. If you also want to find out more, look at the other videos and look for our videos of 10 things that you should do if you want to be a professional footballer. Thanks for listening.